Hi, I'm Henry Segerman. And I'm Kyle Van Deventer. And this is Kinetic Cyclic Scissors. So what exactly is this mechanism? And why does it work? Before we can answer this, let's talk about self-similar quadrilateral tilings. Starting from an arbitrary quadrilateral, we can create a tiling by translating, rotating, and scaling copies so that they match along the edges. We can repeat this process as many times as we want, creating a tiling of the punctured plane. It's not the whole plane, because the tiles shrink down, approaching but never quite getting to a limit point. We can turn the diagonals of each quadrilateral into a pair of scissors. And in this case, the scissors can move, changing the quadrilateral tiling. But can the grid always move, no matter what shape of quadrilateral you start with? Here's an example mechanism that shows some of the complexity. These scissors are part of a self-similar tiling. If you made quadrilaterals out of each of these scissors, then you'd be part of one of these self-similar quadrilateral tilings, but only in this configuration. If I start moving away from this configuration, you see that the scissor up at the top moves much more quickly than the one at the bottom. And if you extended this further along, it would happen even more quickly. So this little mechanism goes about as far as this, but you couldn't extend it much further, it would just seize up. It's only going to work in this configuration. Here's an easy example. If the quadrilateral is a rectangle, then the scissor grid you get is the same as in this mechanism. So what's going on here in general? To answer this question, let's look at an arbitrary scissors. The linkage itself is created by two rigid arms, which are the solid white lines that you see. And those arms are connected together at a pivot in the center. The angle between the arms is denoted theta, and that angle is allowed to change freely as the arms rotate. At any given angle, theta, the scissor determines a quadrilateral, which we've shown here in dotted white lines. This quadrilateral is then used to create a self-similar tiling. So this is what it looks like whenever you stack one scissor on top of another, like you would two quadrilaterals in a self-similar tiling. In this configuration, the angles of the scissors are the same. What we want to happen is that those angles are always the same. And we get a clue into what makes that the case by taking a look at how this scissor is actually created from this one. Notice that this scissor is essentially a scaled up version of this one. And the scaling factor is found by taking the ratio of this side to this side. How do we know? Well, that's exactly what we've done. We've matched the sides to each other. And what we want to happen is for that scaling factor to remain constant as this angle changes. And after a little bit of algebra, uh, what we find is in order for this to be the case, there's a constraint on the original scissor. If we break up this constraint, we find two possibilities for the original scissors quadrilateral. This constraint, this possibility, corresponds with being a parallelogram. The other possibility corresponds with something called a cyclic quadrilateral. So what exactly is a cyclic quadrilateral? A cyclic quadrilateral is one whose vertices all lie upon a circle. And a characterizing feature is exactly what we've said. The product of these arms, AC, are equal to the product BD. If you're curious to see more of the details about how we got to this result, we have a paper and the link is in the description. In this example, the lengths A, B, C, and D are 6, 12, 8, and 9. Of course, 6 times 12 is 72, which is the same as 8 times 9. And so this is one of these examples of cyclic kinetic scissor grids. You can see as it reaches the end of its motion, like around here, it's wrapping more tightly around the limit point, which is around here. It's only getting to a stopping point because it's made of nuts and bolts and plastic. 
rather than mathematics. It could sort of just rotate freely uh, in principle. Here we have another grid, and to make its motion a little bit easier to discern, we've colored alternating columns in black and gray. Here the grid has scaling factors such that if you started a scissor and travel along a one, one path, you arrive at a scissor that was the same size as the first. This allows for a couple of things, one of which being that when the scissors are at 90 degrees, like they are approximately here, the grid has a line of mirror symmetry, as you can see. Another thing that this allows for is that whenever the grid deploys, we actually reach moments of finite rotational symmetry. This happens as the scissors of the same size line up with each other. Here, we've closed to the end of our motion, and we can see that the columns line up radially from the limit point. However, if we deploy in the other direction, the columns actually spiral around the limit point. In this version of the grid, unlike the previous one, where we went along a 1-1 path to get to a scissor of the same size, here we go along a 1-2 or a night smooth path. So this one is the same as this one, and so on. We don't get mirror symmetry, and we don't get the same motion or the same behavior as you move in the two different directions, but again we get the scissors lining up to give these finite rotational symmetries. That's about a six-fold symmetry, and that's about a five-fold symmetry, and this one will go all the way down through four, so about a three-fold symmetry. All right, these are kinetic cyclic scissors. Thank you everyone for watching.